right, so today we're going to talk about uh, specifically child development. So far we have looked at uh, prenatal, so now we're looking at uh, outside womb. So uh, before we get into cognitive development, there was uh, I did want to um, make sure you understand the difference between maturation and learning. Um, this is kind of another um, big concept idea in psychology, just like nature versus nurture. Maturation and learning um, is some things that are very clear cut, just like nature versus nurture. There are some things that are very clear cut maturation, so some things that are very clear cut nature or learning. But then there's other things that are kind of iffy, and they go one. Uh, they could go either way. So uh, what I wanted to make sure you understand is what maturation and learning is. So maturation is the idea that there's this orderly sequence of um, biology, basically that. Um, you have to go through specific things before you can get to other things, okay? So maturation is um, um, this process, basically. Um, the best example and a clear-cut case of maturation is, and I did not do this correctly, I should have animated my picture first. Best clear-cut case of maturation is um, going to be uh, physical development. Okay, physical development, you cannot go and teach somebody, for example, to walk when they're four months old. You just can't. Okay? Uh, they don't have the leg muscles and the strength um, and the balance to be able to do it. You just, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Um, you cannot teach somebody to do something before they're biologically ready to do it. Okay? That's the idea of maturation. Now, learning, on the other hand, and we're going to focus more on learning later, and we'll talk more about um, how we learn things. Going in the wrong direction. Uh, but uh, learning is basically this idea that there's a relatively permanent change in behavior that's due to experience. So you experience something over and over again, and so you learn it. Okay? So learning, um, you can learn, for example, how to read. Okay. You work on remembering the individual letters, and then you remember the individual uh, letter sounds, and you start blending letters together, and then you start to learn um, some word patterns. Okay, that's learning. Okay, so like I said, there are some things that are matru clearly maturation, some things that are clearly learning. But there's other things where it's like, okay, well, it's kind of a combination of the two. Okay. So, as I said, that idea of progressing from first beginning, uh, first going and crawling, and then going to walk. Now, at the same point in time, like I said before, is that there are some children that never crawl. Um, they just don't. They do not feel the need. You will particularly find that crawling and um, walking will be delayed if they have older siblings. Why? Because the brothers. They have no motivation to go up and get it themselves because they will have older siblings that will go get it for them. Anybody in here have that case, you know? My brother didn't talk until he was two or three, I think. I think he was three. He was about to go to preschool. Because my older brother always knew what he wanted. Yep, every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would, I don't know how he did it, but like my, my mom would say, oh no, he wants this. And I'm like, no, mom, he wants blah blah. Oh, I'm going to get blah. And then, mom, you want blah blah. Yeah. And then she'd get all the Yes. There was, there was a story uh, in my husband's household that um, his sister is a year older than him, and she, my, his parents never did not know when he started walking because she acted as if he was her baby, and she would, you know, fart him around, you know, and all of a sudden one day they're like, wait, where? He's walking? When did he start walking? No. Okay. So maturation, okay, is that orderly sequence. Learning is the idea of, you know, actually going through the motions and being able to practice things due to experience, 
Okay. Now at the same point in time, okay, some people argue, okay, can you um, can you teach young children to read? Could you teach, for example, a three-year-old to read? Okay. So some people argue yeah, some people argue no, but it is a case of that. You know, if you keep working at it and you keep uh, working with them about it, some people say that you could teach anybody to learn to read when they were, you know, three years old. As long as they can recognize the differences between the letters, you could go and teach them to read early. Okay? Just the case, who knows? All right, so today what we're primarily looking at, though, is um, this guy. Anybody know who that guy is? He's an old guy, yeah. I'm guessing what's his name is. Yes. Piaget. 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 Piaget is a Frenchman. <laughs> he is. He he is a Frenchman. He has since died. He but he did die not too long ago. Late nineties. Late nineties. I'm not sure. Who else looks like that? Um. All right, he is famous for cognitive development. So we're going to be focusing on cognitive development, and I know that you guys read about it for your homework. Um, I really want to make sure that we are clear on this, though, because, and that's why I'm going to be kind of reiterating some of the things that were in the book, because um, these are going to be things that you're going to need to know um, when you go next week to Trojan Tots. Okay? So a uh, couple things. First of all, Piaget um, was the the big guy in cognitive development. He is not the only guy. We're also going to talk about a Russian name by the name of Vygotsky. Did you get him uh, in your reading? I tried to point him out. Vygotsky at the end. What was his first name? Jean Piaget. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Piaget, uh, a couple of ideas. Um, he had this idea about how we build knowledge. Okay, so. He was the one that came up with this idea of schemas, and I know that schemas was in the last module about gender, gender schemas, and I really didn't like the fact that we didn't talk about what schemas were before we talked about gender schemas, but um, schemas uh, was Piaget's idea, and he basically had this idea that, um, and then remember he was during the 20th century, um, he was born I think in 1895, something like that, he was pretty old when he actually died. He had a very long life. Um, but uh, he was born in the 20th century and it was before the idea of computers. But um, he basically had this idea that in your brain, your brain is like a great big filing cabinet. Okay? Your brain is like a great, great big filing cabinet and your schemas are these mental file folders. Okay? Our mental file folders for things um, as far as how you categorize things in your life. How you learn things is based off of how you code things, how you categorize things. Now we have computers, and so this analogy works so much more. Because think about how you um, sort through and how you um, label things in a computer. Okay? And you have file folders for you know, each particular thing. Okay? So maybe, for example, you have, as a child, you have a file folder. Think about this. Your brain is like a file folder, and you have uh, file folders for different kinds of animals. So maybe you have a file folder for farm animals. And then you have another one for flying animals. Okay? And then you have another one for water animals. Okay? So and this is going to be a child that has been exposed to different kinds of animals, right? And so they start to kind of figure out, these are my file folders. Okay? Now, when we encounter new information, okay, we have two things that could potentially happen. The first thing is what we call assimilation. And the assimilation is where we add to the existing schemas. Okay, so we add to our existing file folders. We're adding new information, and they fit just nicely into the existing file folder. So, for example, um, when you have a child go and see a horse for the first time, okay? Uh, they see a horse, and maybe um, they already have a file folder, they already have a schema for farm animals. Maybe they've seen cows before, or pigs. And they look at it, and they say, cow! Mom or dad says, no, no, that's not a cow, it's a horse. See? This is how it's different from a horse. It's got, it's got hair up here, it's got a nice mane. You can ride a horse and see the horse is brown. And their feet are different. And their tail is different. Oh, okay. But it still, right, still fits into that category 
you have a farm animal. So they can still fit it in just nicely into their schema that they already have of farm animals. Makes sense, right? Now, here's the problem though. What if you encounter something that doesn't fit, okay? And it doesn't fit into these, the schemas that you already have, these file folders that you already have. Then you have what we call accommodation. Accommodation is the idea that we have to change our schemas to add new information. So all of a sudden, oh my gosh, we learned something that doesn't fit properly into there. Okay? So now, maybe they come across, a child comes across something, and maybe, for example, they come across a bug. What is this thing? I don't know what this is. Mom and Dad say, oh, it's a bug, see? It has wings, and has little legs, it can fly. So now the child can go and say, oh, okay, so, so, you know, it's not a cow. So now, now we're going to create a new file folder. Now we have a new file folder, and now we're going to have a new one for bugs. It's a cow, it has spots. You need to see. Okay. Okay. So, what happens is that we are accommodating things, we're changing things based off from the things that we are learning, okay? Um, my son is going through this right now where um, my youngest, he's two, um, and for him, you know, everything, uh, like for example, he's starting to learn the difference between moving vehicles and he calls everything cars or a bus. Car, car, bus, uh, no, honey, that's not a car, that's a truck. Truck, okay, truck, truck, truck. Uh, he's trying to understand the difference between the different kinds of trucks. Um, you know, things looking in the air, um, differences between birds, you know, oh, is that a bird? Uh, is that a plane? Is it Superman? Okay, uh, 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 but here's my point, okay? My point is, is that these schemas are, you gotta think about this, okay? If you think about this, this is your file, uh, filing system in your head. Obviously, as you progress, your filing system is getting more complex, okay? In your head, if you want to think about it in your head, in your head, you have a file folder for psychology, right? Okay? You have a file folder for psychology, and within that file folder, we are adding to developmental psychology right now. So okay. we have all these little subfolders. Okay. Yes. And then the problem is, and this is what blows students' minds, is when all of a sudden the uh, disciplines uh, collide, and it's something that crosses over, and you're like, wait, what? Why are we talking about math and economics? How are they related? Oh gosh, girl, they are totally related, okay? Things like that where they go and cross over, and then you have to have kind of cross between your file folders and everything, you have to have, you know, connections. But the point is, is that you can think of Piaget's idea of kind of this idea almost like a computer system in these file folders and trying to fit things in neatly into these file folders. Does this make sense? Yes? 